Hey, how you doing? My name is John Millen with Millen Group. Um, this is the Benefit Hackers uh, channel, and I'm gonna talk about going down deep into the rabbit hole. I think it's hilarious when I see this online. I'm going deep in the rabbit, down into the rabbit hole. That means you're going deep into a topic that's of interest to you. And I don't know about anyone, but most, I don't know about everyone, but most CEOs, owners, chief financial officers, finance directors, chief human resource officers are concerned about healthcare, right? And the title, like Restoring the American Dream, what the heck that, at first I didn't read the book, I just sat on my shelf for a good year. Restoring the American Dream, it sounds like a, a novel. And then I was like, well, wait a minute, how to deliver world-class healthcare at half, half the cost? Yeah, right. That's what everyone says. Oh, that's not possible. So I'm gonna go deep in the rabbit hole on one topic today. I hope this is helpful because and this is a book. If you're the CEO, owner, CFO, I will send you a copy of this. Um, I buy them direct from Amazon at 20 bucks a pop. I get them shipped to my office, and then I'll put them in a FedEx and send them to you. Why would I do that? Because this sat on my bookshelf for like a year. Now, I've read lots of books. You look at my LinkedIn post. I, I read a lot, and I'm, I love learning. So it wasn't like I'm lazy and I'm not learning new things. I was just reading other things. I'm like, huh. It was sitting there, sitting there, sitting there, sitting there, and I opened it. That's why I want to give you a book. I want to pay for a book, and let's have a conversation. If you are like, hey, let's at least chat this out a little bit, I'll send you books. Let me know. Side note. And please, if you're an employee, you can maybe get your own book. I've been getting requests from people left and right, like, I want a book, I want a book. I'm like, I would love to just ship out books. It's not even my book. Like, I'm not getting paid on my own. This is not my book I'm getting paid on. I'm just sharing great ideas, great thoughts, new ways of thinking of things. And I don't know about you, but I am tired of paying more for healthcare and getting less coverage. And if you have so much money, if you're Google, you don't care about this, right? If you're uh, Apple, you don't care. You make so much profit, it doesn't matter. You just have free healthcare for everybody. We pay the whole bill, no co-pays, no deductible. That's not most companies, right? 97% of them, uh, companies have less than 100 employees. I'm not talking about the big tech firms, big law firms that have unlimited cash. Doesn't matter. I'm talking about the manufacturing plant. I'm talking about the nonprofits that have to deal with a seven percent budget increase for their healthcare, and they get a twenty percent renewal. I'm talking about um, the healthcare organizations, assisted living f facilities, um, mechanical contractors, blue and gray collar industries. That's who I'm talking about. That this is really going to help. So. Part of this book, so what I'm going to talk about today is they, they have a section here about compensation and show me the incentives. So there's a phrase that, that's in here and, and um, I'll find the, the, the page, but I wrote, I wrote notes. So when I read books, just a little thing that I do is I write, here's the page numbers and I have main, I'm like, whoa, that's good. All right, page 27, hospital quality data. Page 33, Kaiser chart. Wow. Like these are things that I can just go right to and find it and reference it. So one of the things I talked about is it that or that was mentioned is show me the incentive and I'll show you the outcome. What is the incentive for someone to do something? You go to buy a car. The incentive of the salesperson is to sell you the car, right? Not just buy your car that's used. And put it on their lot, although today that may be different in 2022 because that's a rare commodity. Excuse me. Their incentive is to sell the car. Doesn't mean they're bad, it just means that's the incentive. So if you look at the ecosystem, the healthcare ecosystem, and this is what I like to explain, it is a four trillion dollar ecosystem, and it's comprised, and I wrote a little chart here. And this actually here, page 93. Here we go, page 93. A shift in mindset. Right, it's talking about you run a healthcare business whether you like it or not. Here's how to make it thrive. And the question we ask sometimes is, how is your healthcare business doing? And it talks about a story of a guy that was spending forty-two million dollars on healthcare, and someone asked him, "How is your forty-two million dollar business unit doing?" Like, what is that? So that's the preface. But there are incentives that drive lots of behaviors. And in healthcare, in the ecosystem of this $4 trillion bucket, there's lots of incentives. And so why is this important? You'd be like, I don't care 
how much money everyone else makes. I like to make, I'm a business owner, we make as much profit as possible, I could care less. I'm a capitalist, whatever. That's fine. But you don't want it to be done at the expense of you and your employees. Like you may have, the CEO may have unlimited money and no big deal. Like this happens a lot, talk to the higher paid execs. Like, yeah, you you can afford a $1,400 MRI, but Mary can't. You pay her 40 grand a year. Don't give me that crap. Like, you are not them. You This is for your, that's your asset base. Your employees are your asset. If they don't come to work, if they all quit, your business is over. So get off your horse. Yes, this is not for you. You can afford a high deductible plan and stuff it all in HSA. That's not for most people. Now, remember, not a law firm. You're not Google. They're not getting paid average $170,000 a year. I had a call with the company. That was the average. I was like, holy crap. Wow, that's a lot. That's really high. <laughs> that's not what I'm used to. But hey, it exists. That's what I'm talking about. about nonprofits, manufacturing, right? Mechanical contractors, blue collar, trades, the the heart and soul of America, the people that the nurses and and, and people that make things run and operate and, and move. That's the heart and soul of, of the nation, really. It's 80% of the people, 90%. So it's important for you to understand where the incentives are so you're not getting ripped off. Like who likes to get ripped off? The fleecing, right? There was a show on TV. So you have this $4 trillion ecosystem and then you have, so you have that right here and then you have, well, let's see if I can do a little, I wasn't planning on this, but this might help. Da, 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 hang with me lost about 2,500 people, no, 20 people, two people, two and a half people. All right, this is a little out of range. Healthcare, four trillion industry, your HR department, you guys over here. Guess who this is in the middle? No, the scale is off. It would be like this, right? It would be like that, right? It would be not even proportionally because this is four trillion. Here is someone, and then this is you, and you're spending half a million dollars a year. Let's call it a million. This is you, a million. Right, right there. Who's this? That's your broker. And if it's a big broker, that is a $10 billion annual company. Did we get that right? I won't mention the name because they're good. These are good companies, good people. I'm not slamming anybody. It's just what it is, it's just the facts. $10 billion in premiums, $400 million in revenue. This is a large national brokerage firm. Great people, right? They collect $10 billion and you spend $1 million, $4 trillion. Why am I saying this? There is a difference in incentives. This person here is what's called a seller's agent or a seller's advisor. Who are they getting paid from? You? Most likely you're not. Now you might be paying, but most of the time you're not. If you're not writing a separate check monthly for a flat amount, then it's not you. Who is it? These guys. They are seller's agents of the ecosystem. Nothing wrong with that. It's the way it's been. I'm not bashing it. It's just the way it's in. Now, it doesn't mean within this bucket that there's Mary, who's my benefit broker, who is amazing and has high integrity and smart as crap and does the right thing. I'm not suggesting that Mary's prob There's lots of Mary's and Bob's and in this. That's not my point. The system is getting paid. This is the system getting paid here. This is a seller's advisor. It's the way it's been for decades. What's shifting though, I got horrible little things here. What's shifting is this guy here. Now this guy here is a buyer's advisor. Whose side of the table are they on? 
your side or their side. They're on your side. They are a buyers. They're buying for you. So I'm over here and my incentive, I don't get paid directly from these guys, right? There's, I get paid a different way, but I'm not reliant on getting paid from the ecosystem. Now, hope this is not confusing the crap out of everybody. I think, I hope it's made it simple, but that's what a buyer's agent or buyer's advisor, right? It's similar with healthcare, or not healthcare, similar with uh, real estate. Oh, you want to sell me a house? Are you the, the seller's agent or the buyer's agent? I'm both. You know, that's an advantage on both. I get paid on both sides and then I can be in the middle and I can do what's best for me, right? Now, Probably not, but that's kind of how it works. I'm getting paid on both sides, 3%, 3%. I'm in the middle. Who's looking out for me when I sell my house? I want someone on my side of the table getting me the best deal. Well, that's a buyer's agent. I'm a seller's agent. I'm, I'm, I'm not that person. You need to get your own person to come to the table, and they get their three, and you get a three. Same thing is occurring right now. The shift has happened. People are tired of a $4 trillion industry making more and more and more money and this getting hammered in the middle. And so where is the incentive? As premiums go up, as the cost of insurance goes up, as claims go up, and this is on another video I did, your healthcare is based on the claims. How much is being spent? The claims is how much you're reimbursing for a doctor visit, a surgery, knee replacement, cancer, whatever, that's claims, right? That's how much is being spent on your plan. Who benefits from rising costs of claims? Who benefits from rising costs of claims? Who, who does not benefit from rising costs, costs of claims? The truth, it's the way it is. So the next question you ask when you're talking to your consultant, advisor, broker, whatever you want to call them. There's different words and they all mean different things. So the question is, are you my buyer's agent or are you a seller's agent? And you have a conversation, but understand this is how it's been for so long, right? So long, so long. It's status quo. Is it easy or hard to break status quo? It's very hard. It's four trillion dollars. Do you think they want to be like, you know you're right. <sighs> Those pharmacy costs that we've been charging you. You know that Trulicity that's six grand a month hitting your plan? Yeah, I know. It's only cost us two hundred dollars a month for the for the drug. But you know what? We got away with it and we're charging this huge money because the employee only pays a forty dollar copay, so they're not saying anything. And people in the middle have never asked what are my claims and the frequency, severity, magnitude of the claims determine my costs over time. And how do I manage my claims? Not how do I pay my buyer's agent 10% less? Like, where is the problem? It's not in the admin fee, <laughs> it's in the claims. And what are you doing to help control the magnitude, frequency, and severity of my claims? And wellness better not be the answer, if you hear wellness as the first thing out of someone's mouth, trust me, do your own research. There's been no proven return on investment of wellness programs that does not control the magnitude, frequency, and severity of claims. And here's some proof. I'm totally going off sidetrack. I've had too many of these. The Biggest Loser is a TV show where people get paid a million dollars to win, right? They lose all this, this weight, sometimes 100 pounds, blah, blah, blah. You follow back up. Year, two, three years later, people that didn't win, even people that have won a million dollars, what happened? They go back to the way they were. You can't even send people to stay healthy for a million bucks. You can short term. Everyone's running after lunch. And uh, I'm going to walk after lunch. And then I'm just, we just talk about walking. And then we're just going to watch a video of someone walking during lunch. And that counts. And I get my credit. It doesn't work. Magnitude, frequency, severity of claims. If you want to chat more. Go to millingroup.com. Glad to. Just trying to open up a dialogue of, of what's really going on. This is a great book. Again, if you want a copy, go to millingroup.com. Let me know. Hope you're doing well. Peace out. Ciao. Hasta la vista. 
um, what's Spanish? Oh my God, I just drew a blank. Um, adios.